well students uh, this is the second lecture we are going to start this is a very interesting part because all of us aware of two kind of motions one is rotational motion other is translational motion translational motion is in a line or in a straight line because any curvilinear motion is a combination of straight line motion and rotational motion and normal straight line motion occur because of a force and rotational motion comes because of a thing which is called torque torque is something which is related with a about which point this thing will be rotated now i have certain uh, uh, certain rings i don't know whether they are equal or unequal doesn't matter now you see this is a beam prepared from the casing of electrical connection i just pasted one graph paper over here and every centimeter i put some marking though the marking are not very good looking there is a thread on this part thread on this part and a james clip was open as a hook so there is one james clip here one james clip and i can see that at 3.5 this part is and i consider this orientation is the equilibrium orientation that means the beam is horizontal now i put one ring on this part without knowing and what is the effect what is the effect it rotates that means how much it will come down it will remain where i am putting it you see if i put this very near to the origin i have changed the distance now you see the distance has reduced if i put it more near to that it has again reduced that means the real rotational force which is called torque depends on the weight or force this has some weight that means gram weight into the distance okay so when i put another equal mass then they are unbalanced what i am to supposed to do i shall go i shall try to go it is about at 18 i shall try to go at 18 it was 18.1 or something like that i put it at 18 and let me see whether the original condition is restored no original condition is not restored now it is at 3 so what i have to do i have to pull it little further now it is 3.5 slightly more no it is slightly let's say 19.5 you please note it down that the equilibrium position is now this ring is at 18.2 and this is at 18.5 you have to find out why this is so if they are of equal weight then they should be at equal distance but always it you can consider these two weights are not exactly equal and therefore this discrepancy but you remember this is the balance position now i put two on this side when i put two i want to restore the balance what i shall do how can i restore the balance without adding two here two rings here i can put this on this side or i can move it on this side very good so where i am to take it is at some what was the reading 19.5 then where i should take it 19 so it should be 9.67 something like that so i take it at 9.7 i take it at 9.7 now it has come to the 3.5 position so it is restored so i have just half it so our equation if i write down the equation 
that if there is a weight w1 and a distance x1 that must be equal to w2 into x2. Now, how I can make this? This is an equilibrium. So, those to talk is in equilibrium means resultant should be 0. That means, if we take it on this side, this is plus, this is minus. Why minus? Because this torque is in the anti clockwise, clockwise direction from your side and this is in anti clockwise direction. So, the direction of the torque is opposite. So, that gives us the direction which is perpendicular to that plane. Now, this is the fundamental equation of all torques. Anywhere there must be some force and some distance. With that, we shall do some very strange equation, but uh, let me say that I want to put two more coins here. So, calculate what should be the assuming that the these rings are of equal weight assume then how we I can achieve that. So, give me a suggestion how we can achieve that for equilibrium that is 3 this one that one I shall move this way why I cannot move in this way then calculate it where you calculate where to shift this and you calculate where to shift this. Two things. There are three weights, three units. Consider the weight is three. Consider the weight is two. The readings were probably, if I correctly remember, uh, right side is if it is two, then it is 9.7 and left side it was 18.7 something for equilibrium 18.2 or something like that. This is number 1, this is number 2. Now, this is 3, this is 2. Just quickly calculate, it is very easy. Only thing is that this will be 3 into 18.2 that is equal to 2 into x. So, find out x for the right hand side. And for the left hand side, this is 3 into x and that we can find out. You got it? Please tell me. Okay. Huh? How much? Tell me, tell me quickly because something very interesting I am going to do. Right hand side, how much? Huh? 20? 27. 27 it will not come, but 27 let me see, I do not think so. Yes, you are right, it goes beyond. What is your reading for the left hand side? Louder? 6.46. 8. 6.4 or something like that. I assume you are right. Now, what I am going to do very interesting that I have two weights and I want to find out the density either of them without using any weight. No standard weight will be used. Is not it interesting? Which one you want the density? This one or this one? stone ok fine. So, I remove these things and place this stone on the right hand side. I place this stone on the right hand side and this sphere I think it is made of brass. This is made up of brass. I remove this then place and find the equilibrium. So, we have to go nearer and this is further, this is nearer 15, 14, 12, 
No, it is must be 14, not 8, 15, slightly more, 14.5. Yes. No. 14.6. This is a very accurate thing because I, I shall show you just after this calculation. Very 14.6. Yes, this is the correct position. This is at uh, 20. This is exactly at 20. And this is that, no, it has to go, slight change I have made. So, please note it down, your left hand side is at 20 and right hand side, I always take this reference that 3.5 and it is 4 point, four point five. When it is 4.5, the reading is 3.5 here. So, now they are in equilibrium. Okay. So, note down uh, this mass, say this is m1, no, this is small m, and take this large m1. So, this is uh, m, small m, and this is L, capital L. No, this is small l1 this distance is small l 1. I shall take the reading later on, the reading is 20, but for the calculation now, I am saying that l 1 is 20 and this mass is small m. Now, I take some water. Now, I shall put it below this. What will happen? If it is immersed in water, what will happen? the weight has decreased. So, somebody come to me say, so you have to displace that on this side. Hana. So, this is at 14.6 and I move this to see. Almost I have achieved it. Yes, I have achieved it slightly. Now, original reading 14.5 is okay. Now, it is 12. So, this is L 2 m and this is capital L m 2 because now the weight apparent weight is less. Previously, it was m 1. Now, it is m 2 according to the argument distance. It has lost some weight. Now, how I can find out the density? This is the question. You keep the readings. Now, let me write it. The right hand side is m 1 initially. Right hand side is m 1 into L and left hand side is small m into L 1. In the second case, this is m 2 into m 2 into L and this is m still remaining the same, this is L 2. So, if we divide it, then it is m 1 divided by m 2 which is equal to L 1 divided by L 2. By simple algebra, we can write this is m 1 minus m 2 divided by m 1. You know this component to dividend thing and this is l 1 minus l 2 divided by l 1 and what is m 1 minus m 2 is the loss of weight. Loss of weight in C G S system is same as that if loss is 10 gram, then how much is the volume 10 cc because density is 1. So, this is the volume and this is the original mass and this is L 1 minus L 2 divided by L 1. So, we can write uh, m 1 by V 
is equal to L1 divided by L1 minus L2. Please calculate. You have all the data. This is the density of the material, the stone. Mass divided volume. You have all the data. So, calculate how much is the density of the stone. So, it is coming from simply L1 minus L2 by L. L1 divided by L1 minus L2. How much it is? Calculate. Very interesting thing. How much? No calculator? Oh, mobile phone, mobile phone. Okay. We can use a mobile. What was L1? L1 was the initial position of this. L1 is? L1 is? I, I can't hear. 20. 10 by 20, no. What I mean to say only L1? 20, 20 only. Only 20. 20, right. 20 uh, divided by L1 minus L2. Second reading, I had I told you. How much is the reading? It was 12. L2 12. 12. That means 8. 8. So 20 divided by 8 is equal to 2.5. How much is the a silicon density? Any stone, it is around 2.5. If I find out the density of that one, then I said put the water here. So, you see, this is a unique method by which you can find out the density of any object with respect to any other object. So, this is a very nice way you can have a project like this that how many densities you can find out. So, this is a very simple thing uh, and how we can use it that I have shown. Now, a last part of it that I remove this weight and also this weight. Now, I put this now put this balloons. This is one balloon, very small balloon. What is the difficulties with small balloon? Can anybody tell me? If we use two balloons, I, let me put it at 20. Let us see what happens. Both the side at 20 and push this slightly forward because Uh, this part is slightly, no, it is okay. It is horizontal. 20 here, 20 here. Now, I am going to bust one of the balloon. What will happen? They are equal. I am going to puncture one of the balloon. What will happen? This has certain amount of air, this has certain amount of air. If I puncture them, what will happen? Tell me. This is, I always reference is there. Now it is 3. Anyway, we consider 3. Your right hand side is at 3. In this scale, the reading is 3. Now tell me. If I puncture this one, what will happen? Right hand, huh? right hand side will go? down. Right hand side it has 3. So, I punctured the left hand side. Do not get <laughs> experiment will fail. Why it will fail? Because a part of it has gone out. So, what I do? I simply put them inside this. Now, the material is same and I can see the reading is again 3. No difference. The whole mass of the balloon is here. This is, this has not gone down. 
but it should have gone little bit. I will discuss it later. But first thing is that with about two no about two millimeter it has gone down three point I mean two just little bit. Now why? Let us consider that equal. Then why that equal? So when the air was there, the buoyant force was balancing it. Very good. You were in class? 11. 11. Very good. Very good. Normally people doesn't say that. That is because of the buoyancy of the air, both the balloon are in air, so they has a loss of weight. So whatever air inside, outside same amount of air is displaced. So basically the loss of weight is same. When the air is inside or not, it's the same thing. But why it is slightly heavier? That is the critical question. Two millimeter it has gone down. What they said is, huh? Now, in this mass and this mass, if they are exactly equal, the buoyancy force should balance. But here it is not balancing. Now, there is no buoyant force. But when you are blowing a balloon, you are putting some pressure. And this balloon has a pressure more than the atmospheric pressure. If it is more than atmospheric pressure, the density of the balloon, I mean air inside the balloon should be slightly more. So the mass should be slightly more, very slightly. If you do it very carefully and take a big balloon, so that proportional error is less. You know proportional error? No, not yet you have learned. But it is very important. Why I am putting at the end 20? Why not at 5 or 6? That is the question. That is because of the error. Let us discuss this. This is a 100 gram, no, this is a 50 gram weight. This is also 50 gram weight. Another discussion I will make that is very interesting. That let us consider we have put 50 gram on this side. And this 50 gram is put at 1 centimeter. This is the last part of it that what is the usefulness of beam balance. You have a 50 gram weight. 50 gram weight, I am not putting G here, into 1 centimeter. And the other weight you have I, up to 24 it is there. Other weight I have put in uh, which is aim at 24. So what is the value of m? m is equal to 1 divided by 24 into 50. Okay. So it becomes approximately I make it 24 it is something 1.99. So, with a 50 gram weight, you can measure 2 gram approximately. Okay. Now, the 50 gram is placed at 24 on this side and we place an unknown mass m at x, then not x, uh, same mass that is 2 gram, no not 2 gram, unknown mass at 1 centimeter reverse. It was at 1 centimeter, it was at 24, now it is taken at 1 centimeter, it is at 24. Then what will be m? m is equal to 50 into 24, that means it is uh, 68, 680 gram. Then what is the range of measurement you can do? Can you follow it? Let me repeat it again. We have taken a single 50 gram. I have hang it on your left hand side, this side and put it at 1 centimeter and some weight I want to put at 24. So, this calculation gives you that weight should be near 2 gram. Next what I have done, I put some weight at 1 centimeter and this 50 gram at 24. So, now 50 gram is at 24, so M has become 680 gram that means more than half kg. Then how much you can measure from 2 gram to 
680. If it is a 100 gram, then 4 gram to 680.